Peace be with you. Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. My name is Ali Muhammad Kartar Puri, also known as Alan Kiesler. And we are continuing today reading from five holy scriptures, seeking God's guidance at this especially important and critical time in human history. So we will turn to Sri Guru Granth Sahib. And we are reading today from the third Pauri of the uh, Japji Sahib. This is the very first sentence. Uh, Some sing of his power. Who has that power? Gavai ko tan. Hawaii kise tan. So tan means power. So ko means koi, means some. Gawai means gate. <laughs> so koi gate hai. Uski, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ki takat ke baare mein. Some sing of his power. And Hawaii kise tan. Who? has that power, or who has the power to sing <laughs> of God's power, of God's greatness. So this is a wonderful message. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, God is the most power, God is the greatest, and uh, we cannot really glorify God adequately. If we do, we try our best, God certainly hears us. My favorite part of the daily prayer, I think, is Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. If we simply glorify God, He surely is listening to us. He is I have that feeling when I pray that God is standing just in front of me, listening very carefully <laughs> to what I'm saying. <laughs> so we cannot glorify God adequately, uh, but we try to. We sing of his power, even if we cannot adequately glorify him, we do our best. That is all we have to do. And God is listening to us, and he responds to our prayer. This section of the Guru Granth Sahib, this Pauri, this, is all about how we can um, see so many different people glorifying God in so many different ways. Okay, we will go on to the Holy Quran. Uh, reading from the 26th Surah, Shu'ara, the, po the poets. And we have come today to verse uh, Ayat 20. Moses said, I did it then when I was in error. So, uh, Pharaoh has in the previous verse accused Moses of having done a oh, horrible deed, killing a man. Um, and Moses says, I did it when I was in air. He immediately admitted, I made a mistake. So this is a sign of a true Muslim or a true person of any religion, a true Christian, a true Hindu, a true Buddhist, a true Taoist, a true Sikh, a true Jew, a true Jain, <laughs> a true Parsi or Zoroastrian, <laughs> a person of any religion who is truly following, he will or she will immediately admit if they've made a mistake. They won't try to defend themselves. So Moses said, yes, he admitted it, he told the truth, yes, I did do it, but uh, it was a mistake. I was in error. So this is a sign of the greatness of God. Okay, and the greatness of the followers, sincere followers of God. A real follower of any religion uh, will be truthful. One of the first characteristics of a true religious person is to be truthful not to try to defend oneself, especially if one's made a mistake, one should admit it. Okay, we will move on to the Holy Bible. 
Bible, Ezekiel uh, chapter 1. And now we are reading a little bit more about this flying saucer. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm just trying to get up a picture here. Okay, we have it. Now I'll read the verse. Today we are reading verse um, 7. <laughs> this Bible is in rather small print. I can't even see the, I'm using a magnifying glass here. Uh, yes, this is verse 18 of chapter 1 of Ezekiel. The four wheels had rims. And they had spokes, and their rims were full of eyes round about. <laughs> so the wheels had rims, just like any wheel has a rim going about it. Um, but these it also had spokes, and this rim, or these rims, had eyes. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I interpret it to mean that those uh, around the outside of that flying saucer, there were windows that looked just like eyes. <laughs> so I've tried to find a picture to show this. It's not very good, but I'm going to show this to you anyway, the best I could do. <laughs> so here is the wheel, wheel in a wheel, anyway. And here, around the rim, I don't know if you can see them, but here there are a number of portholes or windows that look sort of like eyes. And here is Ezekiel. <laughs> of course, some people don't accept that Ezekiel saw a flying saucer, but that's my interpretation. <laughs> and why not? Uh, he certainly saw something very unusual coming from heaven or coming from the sky or seeing in a vision, so I understand it to mean these are flying saucers, four of them, one with each of the four heavenly creatures that he saw. Okay, we will continue on quickly to the Dhammapada, because actually I have to go to work today. I teach this morning, so I'll have to leave pretty soon, so I'm going to making this a short class. Uh, so the Dhammapada, we have come to chapter 11, verse... Six. Even ornament, excuse me, even ornamented royal chariots wear out. So too the body reaches old age, but the dhamma of the good grows not old. Thus do the good reveal it among the good. So first of all, we are getting the same message that we've been receiving from the. Last few verses of the Dhammapada, in which Lord Buddha has explained that we uh, have bodies that grow old and die very soon. They deteriorate and they're not so beautiful as we think. They decay. And here that is being, we're again reminded, even royal chariots wear out. So the king may have a golden chariot with many beautiful ornaments on it, but it also wears out. <laughs> So, too, the body gets old and dies. <laughs> so we should always remember this. But, the Buddha goes on, the Dhamma of the good grows not old. So everything in this world deteriorates. Everything grows old. Everything has an end, a death. But, Dhamma. Dhamma means... Religion is one translation. It means the law, the law of God, or it means the teaching of God. It means the spirit of God. The uh, Anyway, there are many different translations of the word Dhamma. Uh, but the good people, the truthful people, <laughs> the loving people, the honest and kind people, the just people, uh, 
they teach the Dhamma, uh, the good people, and it doesn't grow old. The law of God never grows old. It's eternal. So therefore we say the eternal deen. We call it deen islami the eternal religion of surrender to God. So good people share this knowledge amongst themselves. They reveal it among the good people. And good people relish. <laughs> we enjoy this dhamma, the teachings of God, the teachings of truth, the law, the real shariat, the eternal shariat of love. That is dhamma. So that doesn't grow old, even though everything else, <laughs> our bodies grow old. This whole world grows old. The planet even will be destroyed, probably, as far as we can understand. Even the sun grows old and dies, and solar systems, and probably galaxies. <laughs> everything deteriorates in this world, but the Dhamma, Deen, eternal religion, does not grow old, does not deteriorate. Okay, now we will go to the Bhagavad Gita. We're getting a lot of very, very deep, good instructions in this chapter of the Gita. Uh, chapter 5, we have come today to um, my goodness, I don't even see, I guess it's text to 25, I'm sorry I didn't write it down, and but I believe, yes, text number 25 of chapter 5 of the Bhagavad Gita. Those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings and who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. Hmm. So, yesterday, I think, I hope I've got this. I'm sorry, my memory is fading as I grow older. <laughs> Another symptom <laughs> that happens to these bodies and brains, they get older. Um, I can't even remember, but I think we did text 24 day before yesterday, because yesterday we didn't have this class on the scriptures. But one whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the supreme and ultimately attains the supreme. So, uh, within, the pleasure within, uh, the happiness within, uh, the activity within, that is liberation, freedom, uh, and attaining God. So uh, today we're reading about those who are free from doubt and from the dualities that arise from doubt. Again, who are, whose minds are engaged within. That means engaged. The minds are busy within. And who are always working for the welfare of all living beings. Very, very important point. And who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. So this is the ultimate goal of life. Liberation in the Supreme. Returning back home. Back to Allah, back to God. This is our original source and our, origin, and our ultimate goal. Uh, and who will achieve that ultimate goal? Uh, those who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings and who are free from doubts and whose minds are engaged within, who are enjoying, as we read in the previous verse, uh, happiness within and rejoicing within. So we should be very, very happy within. What do we have to remember? Simply God is great. Allahu Akbar. God is our best friend. God is listening to us as we glorify Him. And we will achieve a great state of eternal happiness <laughs> and liberation 
in the Supreme. So, there should be no doubts about this. We should seek to be free from all doubts and become uh, fixed inside our hearts, engaged, busy, glorifying God and serving God and serving all living beings. Uh, that is the ultimate goal of all religion. <laughs> That's why I say there's only one religion, because that religion is service, service of God and all of God's creation, love, loving service, uh, and freedom from the illusions of doubts and free from all sins, simply engaged in serving God, remembering God in happiness. Okay, we will see what comments or questions we may have. And Ambreen Sahir and Nasa Nasar Chaudhary both say, MashaAllah, great. <laughs> uh, Nasar Chaudhary, speak a bit more Urdu, please. But you maaf karna. Ziyadu tariya class abhi angrezi me le rao. Dekkan har sanichar ko maas Urdu me bolta hoon or or dusre dino me bhi. Lekan jab mein in paanch kitabo ko pad raha hoon, ye sab angrezi me hai. Is liye mein. अंग्रेजी में और काफी लोग भी सुन रहे हैं इन क्लासों को जो उर्दू नहीं समझते हैं इसलिए मैं अंग्रेजी में भी बोलता हूं अमरीन साहर सेज यू स्पीक वेरी ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू वेरी मच खदीजा जायद सेज द फेरो अक्यूज्ड प्रॉफिट मोसेस अलैहि सलाम फॉर किलिंग ए क्रूल मैन व्हिच ही डिड बाय एक्सीडेंट येट द फेरो हिमसेल्फ किल्ड ऑल द फर्स्ट बोर्न सन्स फ्रॉम द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ इजराइल विदाउट हैविंग एनी गिल्ट uh yes uh, moses was simply trying to protect uh a man who was being beaten by that egyptian uh, slave driver and he didn't intend to kill him he just wanted to stop the attack but uh, so it was by accident you are right yet the pharaoh himself killed all the firstborn sons from the children of israel without having any guilt very very good point <laughs> He ordered that the firstborn sons of every, I think not only the firstborn sons, all the sons uh, of the children of Israel males, were to be killed. The women were to allowed, be allowed to live, the girls, baby girls, but the baby boys were all to be killed. And of course Moses escaped <laughs> because his mother hid him. So uh, if God wants to protect someone, nobody can kill them. So. <laughs> Moses did get protected, but all the, we don't know how many thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of baby boys uh, of the children of Israel were killed by Pharaoh. But he condemned Moses for killing just one by accident. This is the this is the demonic mentality that I may make so many mistakes, but I won't even notice them. But somebody else makes one little mistake, and I'll magnify it. I say. So, as uh, Lord Jesus, as at Isa al Islam said, and I'm sure other scriptures also say the same thing, uh, he accused the hypocrites of not seeing the log in their own eye, but looking for the speck in somebody else's eye. So, this is the tendency of sinful people like Pharaoh to accuse others of wrongs or sins, even though they're minor, and overlooking one's own horrible sins. Um, this is what we see happening. Why are the true believers, if they've made a mistake, they immediately see it and admit it and try to correct it. So that's the difference between a believer and non-believer. Okay, Zahid Iqbal says, oh, sorry. Aisha Rafi says, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Why do extraterrestrial and things like spaceship are still. Yes. <laughs> Humans have solved this mystery, but the governments of the world and especially the media are seeing this. So it's not a mystery, but to people who uh, are under the influence of the mass media, and the mass media always uh, hides the truth about extraterrestrials and spaceships, 
Um, but there's no mystery. Unfortunately, we have the internet, so we can find very easily plenty of evidence. Of course, there's a lot of disinformation in the internet too, so we have to be careful. But uh, it's not a mystery, it has been solved. Many people, in fact, I just posted uh, something on my Facebook page. Uh, what was his name? Uh, a, a, a U.S. military man, Stone, I think was his name. Clifford Stone, I can't remember. Anyway, he himself said that they know, the American military knows of 57 different extraterrestrial species. And he himself had seen uh, crashed extraterrestrial craft and even recovered bodies of craft. So it's not a mystery. <laughs> Only the media makes it a mystery. All the governments of the world practically, not all of them, but most of them are colluding in this cover-up of the truth. Okay, Zahid Iqbal says, Hi, sir, nice to see you. Nice to hear from you. Imtiaz Khan says, Hi, sir, how are you? And secondly, when are you going to do Urdu program? I do Urdu program every Saturday and from time to time on other days also. But if you want to make sure you get an Urdu program, Saturday, Sinicharko. Har Sinicharko, Urdu me sirf baat par karta hu. Okay, Sajid Ramzan says, Hi, sir, how are you? I'm just saying to you, I miss you. Thank you very much for expressing your feelings of love. And that is natural, that we miss people that we like and we want to be with them. So if you're in Pakistan, I hope I will be coming to Pakistan within a few months, inshallah, and then we can meet also. Okay, as I said before, I have to go today to teach in the Esparto High School. And I have to be there actually pretty soon, so I've got to get ready to go. But thank you all very much, and tomorrow, look forward to seeing you again. We will continue reading from these five holy scriptures and getting good guidance from God. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. May God protect us all.